Hey everybody, I'm Ted Pommes and this is a Codefling tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to talk about the procedural tools that are inside of Rust Edit. If you noticed, I'm currently running the Rust Edit Pro version, but everything that I'm showing will be available in the free normal version. The procedural tools really help you generate a map quickly. It's probably easier to show than to explain. So let's create a new map. Let's create a 2000 map and we don't have to do anything else. We're going to use the procedural tools. So now we have a empty map. If we turn off the water, we can see that we have a square or a plane to work on, but we are not going to do anything manually. We are going to use the procedural tools. So let's turn the water back on. Let's go to tools. Let's go to procedural tools and let's go to native for fun. Let's just click on all and it will generate a terrain and also do the splat, which is the textures for the terrain. It will add monuments. It will add paths, which is like the roads and the rivers. It will add rocks, it will add tunnels, which is like the underground tunnel system. And it will also add the new underwater generated monuments. So let's click on all first and it will basically spit out a complete map that if you want to, you can then edit and add your own touch to. Depending on the power of your computer, this might take a little bit. Try not to do anything else. And if you're going to do big things, always save first on a different name. So if something messes up, you have a backup. And as you can see, we have a fully finished map. If we check on the map as well by pressing G, we have tunnels, we have monuments, rivers, and we even have underwater monuments as well. So if I turn off the water, check on the map where they are, double click there, I get teleported there. And then you can see that I have one of those generated monuments here on the bottom of the ocean. You can see, like I said, we have a full map. So let's do these individual things and let's see what it actually adds. You don't have to do all at once. If you, for example, get your terrain from a height map or you make your own in a program like World Creator, you can import that terrain and then just generate everything else on top of that. So let's go to tools. Let's go to procedural tools, native, and then only generate the terrain and the splat. As you can see, it's going to add the height map, which is the terrain itself. So the shape of the terrain and the height of the terrain is then going to add the biomes, which is dictating what kind of area is going to be so is it going to be a snow area is it going to be a desert they have different names but that will probably explain more what it means then it's going to add all the topology which is basically the rules what spawns where what happens where it's then going to add the splat map which is basically the textures on the map and then it's going to add the mountains so let's click on all so it's going to do all these terrain things and let's click on confirm then we have a height map and textures on our map. So if I press G, this is what it currently looks like. And we could then add our own custom monuments or place monuments, etc. But in this case, we're going to keep using the generator and layer by layer build up a full map. Let's go to the same list and then let's add monuments. And you can either choose the individual monuments you would like. In our case, let's click on all and let's see what it gives us. And now we have some monuments on our map. So let's press G again. You can see we now have several monuments on our map. You can see that there's a train monument or a train entrance. So let's double click on the map and teleport there. There is indeed a entrance, but when we go down, there is nothing under there. Next up, let's go to the paths. And this is going to add the ring roads and the rivers and also things like the telephone poles. You can check the list. Let's click on all. So once again, if you have your own terrain, and you have your own monuments, you can still use this step and add or see if it can add a proper ring road, etc. because it doesn't work on all terrains. But if you use the built in terrain generator, it should work fine. Looking on the map, you can see we have a ring road and also some roads connecting to our monuments. And this is starting to look like a real map. So let's do the next step. Let's do the rocks. And this will really start giving some character to our map. Everything is pretty flat. And you can see we already have the textures over here for the rocks. Let me go back and you will definitely see what this does. So let's do this again. Let's add the rocks. Click on all. It instantly gives you something way more playable with a lot more cover and difference in height. Let's add the tunnels. We already have the tunnel entrances, so let's just click on tunnels. Let's look at our map. Here is an entrance. Let's turn off the water and you can see that it now actually goes all the way down and there's actually something connected to it. Now, this map is pretty tiny, so it seems like there's only one entrance. If you have a bigger map, it should automatically add more entrances. 
And then lastly, let's add the underwater monuments. Click on all. These are a pretty recent addition to Rust. If there is something new added to Rust and it's not in Rust edit yet, try to check if there is an update. If there is no update, just wait. Usually Rust edit is pretty quick with updating the editor. So now if we check on the map, we should... Yeah, there we go. Double click here. And as you can see, we have our underwater monument. I still have the water turned off. It's definitely underwater. This is not just for using all the layers. You can do certain steps individually. And for example, just adding all the rocks to your map and not having to place those manually is a massive time saver. You could argue that this is not really a custom map, but it's not about how much time you put into it. It's about the end result. Focus more on creating nice custom monuments and let the editor help you where it can. This completely depends on your stance on using these tools and if you can call this a custom map or not. If you don't make any changes to this, it's definitely not a custom map because it's technically just using the seats that you can also find on websites like rustmaps.com and there is nothing custom about this. Hopefully this was helpful. As always, thank you for watching and good luck with your custom map.